there are different challenges when we create distributed systems. Scalability is one of the biggest challenge when we tend to grow our customers over a period of time. In this video, we are going to see what is a scale cube and how you can leverage scale cube to understand the different rules of scalability so that you can create a system which can scale based on your need. This scale cube can act as a basis for all your system design approach when you're creating an end-to-end -end architecture. Let's get started. As the name suggests, I'm going to use a three-dimensional cube in order to define our scalability rules. So let's imagine this is a cube where I'm going to use this particular axis as the x-axis and the one which is going up as the y-axis and the one which is coming down as the z-axis. These are different dimensions which I'm going to use to explain the scalable factor. Now let's look at the x-axis. Generally when somebody says scalability, what we tend to do is we scale our application into multiple instances, we back that with a load balancer and the application generally connects to a single database. Here I'm taking an example of an application which has an endpoint called order. We have a load balancer, it connects to the application, the application connects to a single database. This kind of scalability is pretty common because we can easily spin up one more instance and easily scale our application so that it can handle more traffic and all these traffics are all controlled by the load balancer. So this is generally called as the horizontal scaling. We can also define this in another way as scale by clone. So basically we are cloning the exact replica of the application and we are going to scale it in a sense that it can handle more traffic. However, there could be different challenges. We will look at those pros and cons of each of these axes in a bit. But let's look at all these different axes in the scale cube and then we can overlay that with the pros and cons of each of these approaches. So for x axis, we are going to consider horizontal scaling and it's otherwise called as scale by cloning. This is one way of scaling an application. Let's consider the y axis. Now y axis denotes different types of services where I have service A, service B and service C which are connecting to different databases, database 1, 2 and 3 and these are different domains. If you see one is an order API, one is a customer API and the other one is a payment API. These are having different types of data, right? And these are individual services. This is another way of splitting your application into multiple services. We call this as functional decomposition. So we have a huge data set where we have orders, customers and payment information. All these are related, but we wanted to split them down functionally using different parameters like orders, customers and then payments. And we are able to scale the system in a different fashion. And that's what functional decomposition is. We can otherwise call this as scale by splitting different things. So compared to the x-axis, we had scale by cloning where we created an exact copy of the application into multiple instances. But here we split the application into multiple domains or functions. So here we call it order, customer and payment. These are different functions and we have split the individual application into multiple services and we have scaled them independently. This is another way in which you can scale your applications. Let's look at the final approach of how we can think differently. Now imagine there is service A, but the service A has the same API, but they are deployed into multiple instances, but they connect to different data sets. So here I have a data set called database one, database two, and database three. Now, if you look at and compare it with the x-axis, in the x-axis, we had a single data source and the application connected to a single data source. We scaled the application, but we did not scale the database, right? I mean, though if you could scale the database, the database was connecting to a single source. But here in the z-axis, we have scaled the APIs and also the data set is completely different. So basically we have partitioned the data, right? This is what is called as data partitioning. So when you want to scale your data along with your application, you can also do data partitioning. In addition to horizontal scaling and functional decomposition, there is one more approach called data partition. So this can also be called as scale by splitting similar things. Now, if you see order is the single data set and we have split specific orders which are coming from a specific city or something like that into a separate data set. And individually, you can scale these services based on the data sets. This is another way in which you can scale your application. So scale cube defines all these three different approaches or rules when you're scaling your applications. 
of course you can have a way where you can choose both the x-axis and y-axis or both the y-axis and x-axis or even a combination of both x all the x-axis y-axis and the z-axis and that's why it is using a cube unlike a two-dimensional um, array or two-dimensional approach right if you have a three-dimensional approach you can be sharing different axes and you can share different rules when you're scaling your application to understand that much further let's look at the pros and cons of each of these approach that way we can understand which one is better or the other or which one should we use or the other in our system design so let's look at the x-axis first the pros of x-axis is it's a simple and common approach like i said earlier the general scalability rule is people just try to multiply their instances so which is what is called horizontal scaling so it's a simple and common approach which people take right that's the major advantage of the first approach however there are different disadvantages to it right now what happens if the application is scalable but then the database is not scalable right so all the applications connect to the same data so how will you scale the data right in terms of read and write both now that is a con so we cannot handle the scalability part of the data set because we are just scaling the application instances but we did not think about scaling our data so that's where this acts as a con accessing our data could be challenging the next one is over a period of time the complexity of the application changes with respect to the scale because there could be more and more traffic coming in there could be more and more data sets now how will you handle different clients different data sets etc and you will not be able to give the same kind of response time for all kinds of data so in that case this kind of an approach will be much more challenging in terms of solving all kinds of scalability problems so horizontal scaling will not fit for all kinds of use cases but then it has its own pros and it has its own cons so these are the pros and cons of the horizontal scaling approach now coming to the functional decomposition let's look at the pros obviously as the name suggests when you decompose your uh, application you end up with creating multiple microservices so it is based on distributed microservices based approach obviously the maintenance is going to take a toll when you have multiple services which is generally a con but then you can overlay or you can weigh the pros and cons based on your need the other disadvantage to this particular approach is you need to have the horizontal scaling approach in order to individually scale these services though you functionally decomposed your application into multiple services but then you will have to individually scale these services whenever you need them so you will end up creating a mixture of both x axis and y axis so your application can maybe in the three dimensional space or the model you can have a way where it's like correlated with the x axis and the y axis somewhere right in 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 the queue so that is where when you are using functional decomposition you will have to use the x axis as well coming to the z axis which is the data partitioning so in the data partitioning approach memory and the input output traffic it's going to be a advantage because you have data set split between different databases or maybe caches etc so because of that individual data sets are split across different services and you will be able to have efficient traffic management in splitting your data or retrieving data from the data set the other thing is fault tolerance now what happens if service a of the data set 2 goes down now that doesn't impact the service a of data set 1 right so though the similar or a similar functionality uh, service went down it doesn't impact all the orders or all the users or the data sets within the whole application so this is another advantage in the z axis unlike your functional decomposition where if let's say service b goes down then the whole customer function is gone right but here though if service a one of the data set goes down only that specific customers are affected compared to the other customer list or the data set list that's another advantage of using the data partitioning approach the other advantage is it is much more scalable compared to the functional decomposition so initially we said y axis is better than the x axis but then now we are saying data partitioning is much more better than the functional decomposition this is because you are now granularly splitting your individual functions into individual data sets so if you consider you want to scale your data at a much more granular level because your data is so huge then you can definitely use data partitioning where you can split your data based on maybe a date or maybe customer location or something like that depending on your use case 
so using data partition you have like memory advancements traffic management is better fault tolerance is better and also it is much more scalable compared to the y-axis and the x-axis now if you ask me is z-axis the best no it also comes with its own disadvantages so the first one is the application complexity so similar to the x-axis approach where we had a lot of complicated things happening within an application here also there is going to be increased complexity in the application right because you are splitting your data across microservices or across data sets now you will have to route your traffic based on the type of data and you will have to merge them and things like that there is going to be a lot of application complexity in terms of handling data set itself within the data partitioning approach the next major one is the repartitioning so repartitioning could be tricky because how will you come up with a number of partitions right depending on the type of traffic depending on the type of loads you come up with a approach of partitioning right now when you have already when you are already serving a lot of traffic and you want to repartitioning your existing partition or repartitioning your existing data then you will have to have a strategy or an approach using which you will have to create a new partition or disrupt existing partitions and then recreate some more right so you will have to have an approach in terms of handling that as well so it creates again a complexity within your application so that is on another con the final thing is without having the y-axis approach you cannot easily scale it so you have already scaled your order service to some extent but without functional decomposition you cannot have everything in one imagine having um, the whole uh, food delivery app in a data partition kind of an approach right you cannot survive with that because you will have to do functional decomposition and after functional decomposition you can do data partitioning so if you look at it a combination of all the three x-axis y-axis and z-axis creates a much more scalable system compared to their individual functionalities so scalability is split into three different things horizontal scaling functional decomposition and data partitioning so all these are three different approaches you can decide when to choose what you can individually use each of them without using the other however depending on the type of use case you can mix and match individual approaches and create a much more scalable system for your distributed application i'll just summarize what we just discussed scale cube defines different approaches for creating scalable systems and the first one is called horizontal scaling where we have a simple approach of cloning our application instance into multiple instances backed up with a load balancer which can route traffic to individual instances and that can connect to a data source this is the most common approach which we have and we call this the horizontal scaling or scale by cloning the next approach in terms of scaling an application is the functional decomposition using functional decomposition we scale by splitting an application into different things basically split them into different functionality or different domains here we have multiple services a b and c we, it, it corresponds to like order customer and payment and it has its own database so compared to our x-axis this is much more scalable in terms of distributed because the traffic is split into individual functions and they have their own functionality so even if one functionality is down the other functionality doesn't get impacted however without the x-axis you can in you cannot individually scale these services so a mix of y-axis and the x-axis can make it much more scalable compared to the individual approach coming to the final approach of data partitioning in the data partitioning approach you can take an individual function from the y-axis let's take the order example and we split that order example into multiple data sets so an individual database table can be split into multiple different data sets based on a particular category these category could be geographical location or maybe names etc depending on the type of frequency and the data usage pattern using this kind of data partitioning you can scale your application by splitting similar things so that way you can individually scale these services though they are all uh, instances of the same compared to the x-axis if you look at it uh, the data partitioning uses the same code base for all these instances however the data is completely different so using a mix of all the three different approaches of scalability you can create a much more scalable system and you can pick and choose the one which you want in whatever kind of use cases you're catering to i hope this particular video was helpful in understanding the basics of a system design approach as always if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video thank you very much